Welcome to our review on the interaction of limiting factors. So when we actually want to carry out investigations on the rate of photosynthesis, our go-to plant in biology is this stuff called Elodea, which is basically the scientific name for pondweed. Now, the reason that we use this pondweed is because it's going to give off bubbles of oxygen that we can actually work out the rate by doing something with. Now, what we're going to do with these bubbles, you could do two different things. First one, you could go with a really simple approach of just sitting there and counting the bubbles. It's a very exciting practical if you've done it, as you probably know. Alternatively, we could, as opposed to counting bubbles, use a measuring cylinder which has been upturned and filled with water to collect the actual gas that's produced. Now, one of the things you need to be able to do in an exam is basically suggest improvements and explain why that would be better. So if they were to talk about the fact that we could do this experiment and count the bubbles and ask you about the possible errors, then think about when bubbles are made. Are they all the same size? Would you potentially miss some bubbles if they're going really quickly? So all of those could be sources of error in the actual investigation. So if they ask you how you could then improve it or reduce the errors, then collecting that gas in a measuring cylinder means that you don't have to worry about counting them. It makes no difference if the bubbles are bigger or smaller because you're recording the total volume of gas that's being made. So make sure you can explain why certain things are an advantage or an improvement in these different experiments that you've done in class. So one of the factors that we could look at in terms of its effect on photosynthesis is light intensity. So if you were asked to design an experiment to investigate how light intensity affects the rate of photosynthesis, all you'd need to do is place a light source or just something as simple as a lamp up next to the pondweed first of all, and then move it further and further away, recording the amount of gas made at each distance. If you're asked to investigate how carbon dioxide concentration affects it, you can add different masses of this chemical called potassium hydrogen carbonate to the water because that actually creates the carbon dioxide for our plant to work. If you're investigating temperature, you just put the equipment in a water bath and you use different temperatures of water baths and then just record the amount of gas you make each time. So do make sure that you're aware of the different techniques that we would use to generate those different conditions for an investigation. One thing that we do need to be aware about is this thing called inverse square law. Now, what that actually means is that when we double the distance from the light source, then what we'll see is the light intensity decreases by a factor of four. So that can be represented in two ways in terms of an equation. First one is on that middle line there. The relative light intensity is one divided by the distance from the light source squared or the shorthand version one over d squared. So I have seen this as a practice question somewhere where they have asked you to identify the equation that represents the inverse square law. So make sure you do know the different symbols for things so you can identify it in case it comes up as one of those multiple choice questions in the future exams. Now what we found is when we looked at the graphs for the different limiting factors we ended up with that point where the graphs leveled off for our light intensity or our carbon dioxide concentration. And the reason for that, if you remember, was that there was a different limiting factor. So when we're carrying out investigations into any limiting factor for photosynthesis, there will always be that point where the graph is going to level off, unless it's temperature because enzymes denature, remember. And the reason for that little plateau on the graph or the horizontal line is that a different limiting factor is then coming into play. So if we consider our light intensity graph that we looked at, initially increasing light intensity increases the rate of photosynthesis until that certain point where it then leveled off. So it didn't matter that we kept making the light intensity greater, it didn't affect the rate. Now that's because either temperature or the concentration of carbon dioxide was then the limiting factor. So just remember that when you're asked to explain those graphs, make sure that you do talk about the fact that these limiting factors do interact with each other. So that for a certain point, it's going to be one of those limiting factors, but beyond a certain level, it's going to be a different limiting factor that takes precedence. 
So that's the end of our B1 reviews. I hope you found them useful. And obviously, make sure that you do subscribe so that you can be up to date with all the future review videos.